Hey friends, welcome back. Uh, so today, um, I need to give my Focusrite ISA 828 a bit, a little bit of TLC. Um, so I have two of these preamps, and I use these primarily for remote recording. Um, these used to be the main preamp banks in my recording studio before I got the old Midas console, but uh, these have been relegated to remote recording world uh, for the past few years. So um, one of the projects that I needed to do on this is uh, replace the switch. Um, for whatever reason, the rocker switch here is just, it kind of wants to make contact sometimes. And you have to be very gentle with it to, uh, to get it to actually come up there. Um, so I, I've had the replacement focus right switch on my desk for probably like, I don't know, two or three years. So today's the day that it actually needs to get done. So um, I have to build a recording rig. I'm in the middle of prepping that rig. And I just thought to myself, you know, <laughs> it would be smart to do this now before this goes out on a session. So um, I bought this thing used probably eight years ago on the Electronic Bay. Um, I have another one of these that's in absolutely perfect mint condition. Um, this one is, is definitely a little bit beat up. I uh, had a session a few years ago. I needed another one, and I just grabbed one that's uh, from eBay that I could, I could get cheaply. Um, so I'm going to pull this thing apart. Um, and, then, you know, it's just, just a little bit of love that needs, that needs to be had. These knobs are pretty dirty. You could definitely tell that this thing got some daily use. Um, there's, you know, some rack rash and some scratches and stuff on here. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to pull this thing apart and, uh, and do a little, a little TLC on it. So, uh, you know, join me for that journey. Here we go. All right, so we've got the top removed here, and here is what is going on inside this thing. Um, so, you know, one of the, the interesting things is I, I feel like people really kind of go off the deep end when they talk about mic preamps. You know, if you just start to get into recording, um, you know, one of the first upgrades most people do um, is, is get mic preamps. Um, and it's really interesting to look at this thing. So this is an eight channel microphone preamplifier um, and it has a digital card on it. So uh, this piece right here is a, is a digital output card. So it will do A to D conversion in this box. Um, all you have to do is hook it up to ADAT and then this is a, an A to D converter as well. Um, but I, I find it very interesting um, to look inside different things like this. So, you know, for example, uh, this is the power transformer uh, on this thing. So that is massive. You know, if you think about a single rack space, eight channel uh, converter, you know, and you look at the, the difference between the, the, the power transformer on this preamp bank alone, which this is actually loose and it's tightened up. So we'll do that. Um, and then also you've got, some, you've got some, some input transformers here as well. And then again, looking at all of the hand wiring that has gone on in here, uh, despite there being a PCB, um, each one of these little gray leads right here has a little heat shrink end on that. So, you know, a, a human being had to build this thing. So, you know, when you often look at it, 
and I can't even remember what these things retail for now. I, I think with the digital option card, the ISA 828 is right around 3500 bucks. So, you know, when you look at that and you're like, well, why is that so expensive? Well, look at the guts on this thing alone. Beyond, uh, beyond what does it actually sound like, you know, it's, it's built very well. There's a lot of um, electrolytic capacitors in here, which we're going to just go through all those and just check them. And by that, I mean, just make sure that there isn't anything that's bulging in here. But the build quality on this is excellent. I um, have pulled my other one apart uh, just to actually tighten down the power transformer. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the build quality on this is, is really, really good. So um, the, the offending guy on this one, the power switch, that's what we've got to pull out of here today. So uh, this actually looks like it'll be pretty easy um, to pop out. I'm just going to take a quick picture of these. Uh, these all have a little a little spade disconnect on there. Um, and in, in, in typical Europe um, fashion, instead of black and white for hot and neutral, we see brown and uh, blue. So uh, the, uh, the top chassis here is grounded, um, so I don't really want to pull that off, but... Uh, uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get in here and replace the switch. Oh, I guess I should probably show you the front panel on this. So each one of these channels, um, it essentially behaves like a mixing console. Um, so this knob right here is a step to gain uh, to bring you into the channel. So this is where you set your channel gain, and then this is your fine trim. So this is a, a step knob. And then this is a smooth knob here um, to, um, to, to get you into gain ranges. Um, the other thing that this does really cool is this 30 to 60 button right here puts you into normal gain and high gain range. Um, so if you look at the controller or the knob here, um, you can see where it goes into yellow 30 to 60. Uh, it just gives you uh, that, that incremental uh, dB in gain. Um, so you can go from 0 to 30, 10 to 40, 20 to 50, and then up here is 30 to 60. Um, phantom, phase, high pass filter, and then there's also insert points on the back of this thing, which is actually pretty cool. So each, if you want to insert a compressor or something like that, you can just engage your insert right here. Um, it gives you different transformer taps, which is pretty cool. Uh, so there's a low impedance, the ISA 110, which, which mirrors the, uh, the focus right, um, the original ISA module, a medium impedance and a high impedance. So you can just toggle through that button to get different tones. Um, I usually leave it on the ISA 110 setting, uh, to be completely honest with you. Um, you know, I, I kind of always think that if you're going for, uh, you're buying a piece of gear, you're buying it for the character of that gear. So give me all the focus right character. Um, you also have a mic line switch here. And then on the first four channels here, um, you can actually, um, if you notice the difference between uh, channels four and five here, you can uh, swap this to mic line or instrument on the, uh, the front half of this here. You have four quarter inches on the front for if you want to plug a keyboard or a guitar or anything like that into this. So anyway, let's uh, get the switch changed.
right, y'all. Well, that finishes this up. Um, so, you know, a quick little project. Just took about, uh, you know, an hour or so to get this guy back together. So, switch is working really good. Um, here's the other switch. So, I don't know if you can I'll put this next to the microphone. You can kind of hear how it sort of clicks in a middle position, whereas that gives you a very nice, satisfying click. So, um, this guy is definitely seen some heat damage on this if you're if you can if you can see this so these units get super hot so right now it's resting on its on its heat sink um, i've taken a little laser thermometer to these and the chassis alone is can i've seen it get up to about 111 degrees so these things definitely run hot um, another thing that i've had to adjust on these is that that little transformer um, definitely needs tightened up it comes loose over time so if you do own one of these that should be a nice preventative uh, maintenance thing that you just check on every once in a while i would say that most people that own these are probably using them in a studio and not taking them out on the road but uh, these are a really good remote recording uh, preamp as a matter of fact um, I, I will tell you this Anybody that follows me knows that I'm certainly not a snob about gear. I'll, I'll mix on anything. Um, you know, one of my famous lines is, uh, what, Billy, what's the best sounding mixing console? The mixing console that you don't have to bring. Um, but I will shout these out. As far as remote recording goes, this box rocks. It has such low noise. You can drive really, really far mic lines with this. Um, it has just a ton of gain. And if you hit this thing with a transient, um, it will just take it all day long and not distort. So you might be asking yourself, what does the ISA line of Mike Pre's sound like versus other Focusrite things? Um, the ISA line of Pre's are very transparent. Um, they, they, they have a, a bit of a warmth to them but you know, I would say to uh, are they? Do they sound like a Neve? No, they don't. They're very, very clean. Um, but they take transients better than than most anything. Um, so with the Midas desk, if we use this knob, you don't start to get gain out of an SM58 or a dynamic microphone until that preamp is right there, which is the Midas sound, right? The digital consoles behave in the same way. In Focusrite world. You can do, a, if you put your, your input at minus 10, uh, this is a 58, as an example. So that's in low gain range. You can gain that up to high gain range, and you still have two more clicks of attenuation and all the way up before you go all the way up. So, you know, this, this mic preamplifier in here is absolutely phenomenal for, for, for live recording. Um, I'll give you an example. I was doing a remote recording gig with a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. So that was eight channels. I was doing this gig for a friend of mine. All I had to do was babysit the, the equipment. Um, the singer was a famous Broadway uh, diva that, uh, that had a pretty, pretty serious set of pipes. And she did the show three nights in a row. On the third night, you know, we pretty much had recording wrapped. And she lit me up in a way with a belt because it was the last night that, I mean, I hadn't touched my gain stages in, in three days. Um, and she lit me up. And the preamp on that distorted in such a way, it just, it almost sounded like an engine hitting a rev limiter. It just went da, 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 as she went with the belt. And I, I, I kind of laughed to myself because, you, know, I, I, you know, I like to think that I very famously don't really care so much about gear and I'll, I'll mix on anything. But I was like, man, I wish I had my ISAs for this gig because they would never do that. So anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about this particular piece of gear, um, I, I'd be happy to answer them or, or chat about them. Um, if you're looking for a very uh, high horsepower, uh, very clean mic preamp, these things rock. They're not super popular i haven't seen a, a bunch of these and I, I think they've been out for since the 90s or so but um anyway if you have any questions hit me up thanks for stopping by bye